make it a little bit clearer. Hopefully you guys can all see this as you can kind of see how that is outlined that um, obviously is broken into different 50 minute periods. And then, um, you know, you've got break and you've got lunch and you've got the school day finishing at 3.15. Um, so, yeah, as always, if you've got any questions or anything, just pop them in the chat or just stop and interrupt me. It's no problem whatsoever. And obviously in their timetable, they're going to have regular subjects like, you know, English, math, social subjects, RE, PE. Um, so in first year, we kind of choose for them. And then obviously as they go further up the school, they can start to decide the subjects um, that they're more interested in. Um, so I think that that is me for the timetable for a little bit. And um, we're just moving on to school uniform that Ms. Vogue is going to come and tell you about now. Hi, I'm Miss Bok and I'm head of Pentland House um, and I'm going to quickly take you through um, uniform, which I know that lots of you have different questions about. Maybe it's, you know, usually at our parent information evenings, it's the, the topic of most conversation and lots of questions because it's obviously quite different to primary school. Um, so uh, we like to keep it nice and simple, uh, plain black trousers or a plain black school skirt for boys and girls. Um, and thinking about a school tie must be worn um, at all times and we'll give, as I say, first years a school tie when they come through the door on the first day. Um, we always say a white shirt or blouse or a, a polo neck top, you know, with a with a collar on it um, and plain black jumper or cardigan. We don't want any logos or anything on, on the jumpers. We like to make sure that they're nice and plain um, and no hoods on them. School trousers or a skirt of an acceptable length, okay. Um, so if you're wearing a skirt, you know, we really encourage the girls to wear um, tights underneath and same with leggings. If the girls are wearing leggings, they must have a school skirt over the leggings. Um, black shoes or trainers with black laces, okay, um, so we're happy to, you know, they can have a bit of white on them, but we, we ask that you keep them as black as possible um, and that they have black laces in them, not white laces. Um, and as they head through the senior phase, you'll be given a school blazer um, and our S4 to 6, they wear um, blazers, which will be given to them. Um, we're also going to take you through school lunches, which are absolutely brilliant. Um, so you're you're available in the school canteen okay and there's just some pictures here that you can see just some options available there's a wide range of choice and dietary requirements can obviously be catered to and what we've said this year which is a slight change is that we ask all s1s to remain in school during lunchtime until we move to the new school so we as i say we want to keep all s1s eating within the school building at lunchtime um, until we move to the new school building. So that will mean that they will have to access the canteen or they will need to bring their own lunches to eat within the school building. Um, and the school menu, as I said, has got lots of different choice um, available there. And if there's any questions on that, um, we can ask it, we can we help you with it um, in terms of paying for things in the school canteen that's through parent pay as it will have been in primary schools so you upload the money to parent pay which we can obviously get your information for and stuff to make sure you get your account set up um, and the money goes on there the kids will be given a pin number they pay for their lunch with the pin number um, and we're just going to skip past that one. So in terms of clubs and study supports, as I say, um, at the moment with COVID restrictions, we've been quite limited as to what we can offer. Um, but if you have, you know, friends, family members that maybe have come to school and has come to Castlebury in the past, you'll know that we've got quite a wide range um, of extracurricular programmes available, lots of things available in um, the PE department um, through active schools and then we also have you know study support options for lots of different subjects across the um, different uh, subjects in the school and they're accessible lunch times after schools and there's lots of things on offer. Um, so we have the support for learning department which I'm going to pass you back to Miss Corso who's going to take you through that. Hello, um, so I'm just going to update you a little bit about the support for learning department. Um, I may go a little bit quickly through the slides, so hopefully that's not a problem because there's quite a lot of information. So ultimately, the support for learning department is a really strong department and it works like hand in hand with people support um, so that we can make sure that we're getting things right for all our young people and um, that they feel like they're like learning in a really supported environment. So there's a number of reasons why people might um, require support for learning. Um, so, for example, this could be that they're struggling with their learning, um, that they potentially have um, any learning needs, um, that maybe they're just finding things a little bit difficult at the moment, um, that they maybe had interrupted learning. There's a lot of different reasons and ultimately everybody's looked at on an individual basis. Um, 
so there's a number of different things that the support for learning department do um, and they do them really well so um, first of all we have pupil support assistants that can come into classes and help support young people um, if they are entitled to that and they work closely with the teachers try and you know ensure that all our young people are, are managing especially in like you know um, English and math um, we've got some really good digital technology. So at the moment, as a school, we're moving towards being sort of one to one devices for most young people. And they've got a sort of set of iPads that they can give to any learners that need them um, that, to help them in classes. Um, we've got a really strong sort of mental health support that has been um, really needed at this time. I'm sure you are all aware of that too, having gone through lockdown, that young people have really, really struggled. Um, so we've got a, a really amazing mental health worker and then in addition to try and support that and support their learning we've got nurture groups with your young person can be a part of and we've kind of got social skill groups as well so all of it's done in a really supported environment and you guys can refer your people to us or we can put their names forward and basically we review it and work together to make sure that um yeah they feel like they're getting the help that they need to learn so that's a lot of um so that's just a kind of picture of like in nurture so obviously for example did you in nurture they um you can see you sit around and they'd work on their social skills and you know each group has got about six to eight members and it's a really nice calm environment that a lot of people feel is really safe and um really supportive so that's about supporting all our young people and i guess inside of that as a com sort of community school and a, a school that where we sort of all feel like we're working well together we also want to put on a supports for families so we have a chai worker so she's absolutely amazing she helps with community help and advice so she's available at the school you know if there's any um issues in terms of the you know, benefits or you know questions about things so she's there and she provides support in some primaries as well so some of you may have met her um, our mental health worker is also able to work with parents and carers, not just pupils. Um, before, previously, prior to COVID, when things were a little bit more normal, we were able to run parental nurture classes, which was really nice and get parents to come into the school and see their young people. Um, we've had raising teens with confidence, which some of you may have done raising children with confidence in the primaries. Um, and we've got an education welfare officer to help support with our attendance and ultimately attendance support. So there's a lot of things on that's just a small list, but I, mean, I guess it gets a bit bigger and ultimately something that we're really, really keen and focused on is working in partnership with you guys as parents and carers. Um, so I'm just going to hand back to Mr Johnson now to tell you a little bit more about, um, you know, sort of, oh, I'll let him explain. So. Um, this is what we call Castlebury Community High School's blueprint, um, and it's all about protecting the learning. Um, we have very simple rules at Castlebury, and they're based around being ready to learn, being respectful to to everybody in, in our community, and being safe at all times. Um, equally, we look for over and above behaviours in classes and out with classes, and we're looking for attainment, perseverance, and contribution from the pupils. If there is a, a kind of opportunity for, for staff to see that, then um, they can award positive or negative referrals that can be communicated to parents at home via an app called Class Charts. So I'll get in a wee bit more detail about that. So our, our vision is that um, together everyone achieves more. This is something that the whole school community worked on quite closely um, and it's, it's when alongside a program that we run called Columbo 1400, where we take a residential up to Sky, um, second year residential, whereby they go up to a, a leadership based program around values and, and find out a wee bit more about who they are as a person. Um, that led to us looking at the values, which are focused, respect, integrity and perseverance. And we are a very restorative school. We looked at specific stepped actions um, whereby in the class a, a teacher will give um, the pupil a reminder to be calm, to be ready, to be respectful, to be safe. Then they'll give them a caution, which is, look, I know you did this last week. I really need you to do that again this week. You've already been given a reminder. This is your caution. You now need to be ready to learn, for example. And then they'll give them a last chance, which is where they ask them to step outside for a minute and they have a quick conversation one to one. Uh, they reset the boundaries again and they ask them to come back into class and then if that happens thereafter then they park them somewhere in the area to complete their work um, and this whole vision is about protecting the learning of everybody in, in the classes and um, the staff have worked hard to look at microscripts so that they're talking to people rationally at all times and uh, to ensure a consistent approach 
Uh, there's too many, too many people dealing with things in different ways. We want everything to be dealt with quite consistently. Um, um, we have um, lanyards that we wear. Um, I looked, I'm supposed to be wearing mine just now, but I'm not. But on that, it has restorative questions whereby we'll, we'll hold restorative meetings with pupils should there be any issues. So the, these are plastered all over the classrooms. Um, we do a lot of work with the pupils around this. Um, and we also do a lot of work with the staff around this because we understand that for there to be a big shift and a big change in people's behaviours, it's the adults that need to change initially before the pupils change. Um, so we've been on a big journey along the uh, past three years around changing our behaviours as a staff to promote better learning, teaching and better behaviours in, in the pupils in the school. Um, so this is the, the the app. It's called Class Charts. You can download it on your phone or you can have it on um, on a desktop. Uh, you'll get a username and a, a unique code for your pupil uh, or your, your child, sorry, and that will link to the child. And whenever they get a positive or a negative, um, you'll get an alert on your phone, which will allow you to see what has been said about that positive or negative. So that could be any time throughout the day, period one to period seven. It could be after school. It could be when um, some people do it at the end of the week, depending on what they're doing in class as well. Um, with that, we look at the protecting the learning overall points in the school. So it gives us a real picture of what's going on in and around the school. Um, and we tend to break this up between Blackford, Pentland, Cotton that's been snipped out. And we have a bit of a house competition around positive uh, behaviours about ensuring that um, alongside sporting events that we tally these things up. So it's quite competitive. It's quite good. Um, obviously, we've not had much going on in the last year because of COVID, but we'll get back onto that again next year. But you you were really looking at a kind of four positives to one negative um, across the course of the last couple of years in the school, which has, has been great. Um, and it lets us look specifically at trends like after break, after lunch, what can we do? And that's where we do work with the staff to say, well, look, you're, you're reporting that pupils aren't ready to learn at this time of the day, but how can we make sure that we're doing specific things to ensure that they are? Um, so it's been really positive and um, it's going to continue to take place um, as we move into the new school. Um, we have a Castlebury Community High School YouTube page. Uh, recently, only on Friday, I think it was, there was a new post put up about um, the positive destination story. There's a There was a a news article being released this week from the Herald. Um, somebody came in to speak to us about our positive news and our positive success throughout that. There's a, a lovely video of ex-pupils and what they're doing now. Um, it dates back to a pupil that left in 2004, I think. So it's it's not just recently, it's also dating back a number of years. Um, if you get the chance to go and have a watch, please do. There's other videos on there as well. Um, and it seems to be the way to communicate with parents um, and pupils at the moment is, is by creating videos instead, instead of sending out loads of letters. Um, so please have a look at that. Also on the, on the school website, you'll see um, a tab for, for new S1. And within that tab, there are a number of sways and the sways will take you through um, some of the faculties. They'll take you through some of the P7 information. They'll take you through information about SLT in the school and the things that we've discussed today. So please uh, take time to look through that with your pupils and also watch some of the videos as well. Um, so what's next uh, for the P7s is that there's there's going to be school tours arranged during the days of the three day visit. So to separate these, given what's going on in the world at the moment, we've decided that Nidri Mill will come on the 15th um, of June and Castle View will come on the 16th of June and on the 17th of June, New Craig Hall will come. And what we'll do is we'll give information to the P7 teacher to allow you to sign up to, to specific times um, that will allow us to ensure that there's measures in place to support um, anything that's going on at the time. Um, so if you don't have communication with the P7 or if you want to just make contact directly with the school, we can do that also. Um, so feel free to call the school at any point to arrange a meeting. If you can't uh, do it within these three days, we'll make sure that we have a member of staff that can take you and uh, your child around the school to give you a wee bit more of an, um, a kind of personal touch. Um, we're also willing to do that. So we also have the three day virtual tour, which the PSLs will be heading down to the primaries to spend uh, to visit. The, the school that you're in or the school that is there. There's a typo, sorry about that. 
and uh, there's the enhanced transition, which we're going to look at outdoor sessions. Um, so that that's really it from us. Um, it's over to you now. If you've got any questions, feel free to pop your hand up or or even speak. Um, come off mute. Um, if not, the numbers there, as I mentioned before, you, you're more than welcome to phone the school and speak to any of the members or staff that, that presented today or that are in the school. We're wanting to support in any way possible. Um, so I'll pass it over to you just now. And don't feel you need to ask any questions. What I'll do is I'll I'll hang on for five, ten minutes um after this. If anybody wants to um stay online, they can they can ask any questions as well. If not, feel free to go. Um you've got our, our information there. You can contact us at any stage. And thank you so much for attending tonight. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Naivasha's telling me the questions on a different computer. So in terms of the classes, we would like to uh, for our PSL to attend the three day visit and they'll let them know the classes that they're in then. Um, we are yet to finalise how many pupils are actually in the year because there is still a bit of movement going on in Edinburgh Council um, with um, schools at the moment. So we'll know by the end of May exactly who is coming to Castle Bray. Um, and we'll have finalised numbers and that's when we'll look to create the groups. So we'll share that information with uh, the pupils um, during the three day visit. So they've got an understanding who they're going to be with. We're also liaising with the P7 teacher just now. So that has a big um, part to play in where the classes um, are, how the classes are set, because they tell us we, we gather information on that as well. Yes, we can potentially.